real strength of a spreadsheet is its ability to calculate. Otherwise it's just a glorified table that you could otherwise do in Word. With Excel you can do very strong formulas and functions. Let's start with formulas and in the file Excel 1 let's move to the sheet called formulas. And I'll just zoom in a little bit with the plus in the bottom right of my status bar. What I've created for you here um, is a yellow set of cells which contain simple numbers to get your head around which are 10, 20, 30, 40. And in the green cells starting in B9 I'd like to put some formulas which basically look at addition, subtraction, multiplication and division for starters. Let's first of all click in the cell B9 because that's rule number one when it comes to formulas in Excel. Rule number one is you must sit in the cell that's to display the result. And I want to display the result in B9, so I click in the cell B9. Rule number two is a formula always starts with an equals. And you'll find the equals key near your backspace key. So I'm going to press equals. The equals tells Excel that what follows the equal sign is not to be displayed in the cell, but is to be calculated. Rule number three, if you want to refer to any cells, I would recommend that you use your mouse. You can type the cell reference, but I'm going to use my mouse and click on B4 rather than type B4. So this formula currently says equals B4. Now rule number four is as far as plus, minus, times and divide, use your number pad if you have one out the right hand side of your keyboard. It makes it a lot easier to locate the arithmetic operators or arithmetic operators um, and you don't have to use the shift key. So I'm going to press the plus on my number pad. So now I have equals B4 plus and the B4 shows blue and there's a blue border around the cell B4. So that's the connection between the two. I now want to refer to B5 so I don't want to type it. I actually want to click on B5 which was rule number three. B5 has a maroon border around the outside and also the reference to B5 in the formula is maroon as well. The fifth and final rule is once you've finished typing your formula and I have equals B4 plus B5 so I'm expecting it to show me the result of 10 plus 20. Once you've finished typing your formula rule number five is press enter. I'm done. When I press enter the answer 30 appears in the cell B9. And if I click on B9 and look up in my formula bar, I can see the formula that sits behind the answer 30. The formula bar reveals that 30 wasn't typed in that cell, that a formula has actually been entered, and the formula is equals B4 plus B5. I can click in the formula bar if I want to reveal the formula in the cell B9, and I can press escape to get back out. So now what I'd like to do is put another formula and rule number one is click in the cell that's to show the result. So that's the cell B10. What I'd like to do is create a formula that says equals B4 times B5. So we press the equals key, we click on B4, we press the star or the asterisk on our number pad because that's multiply. Multiply is not the X, it is definitely the star or the asterisk. And I'll click on B5. And now I have a formula that says equals B4 times or multiplied by B5. 10 times 20 when I press enter is 200. The third formula I'd like to put in is in B11. I click in B11, I press the equals key, I click on B10 and now I'm going to go minus on my number pad and click on B5. When I press enter 10 minus 20 is negative 10. And in B12, I'd like to put equals B4 divided by B5. Equals B4 divided by B5. And enter. 10 divided by 20 is 1 over 2, which is 0.5 or a half. And so those are the formulas using the four arithmetic or arithmetic operators, plus, times, minus, and divide. Now the beauty of a formula is that when you actually change B4 and or B5, all the formulas will update because all the formulas are looking at the cells B4 and B5. For example, let's click on B4 and if I change that to 20, as soon as I press enter, then the answer 40 appears in B9, which is 20 plus 20, and the answer 400 appears in B10, which is 20 times 20, and 0 appears in B11 because 20 minus 20 is 0. And 20 goes into 21 time. If I change B4 to 100, I get these results. And if I change it back to 10, 
I return to the original results. So the beauty of a spreadsheet is its ability to calculate. And we tend to refer to cells so that we can change the value in those cells and everything recalculates. And that's why it's such a popular management tool. <clears throat> because you can perform what if analysis. And that is what if I change this value to 100? What will it do to my bottom line? What if I change this value to 10? What does it do to my answers? And so that's the power of Excel. Now, there is the need sometimes to show the formulas. And we can do this, as we just discussed, by clicking on a cell. I can click on B9 and I can see the formula. I can click on B10 and I can also see the formula. But there's a big assumption here, and that is I know where to click to be able to see the formula. What if I don't know if there's any formulas in a spreadsheet and I don't know where they are, so I don't know where to click? In which case, I need a button to show all the formulas in a sheet. And there is such a button on the Formulas tab in the ribbon. If I go to the Formulas tab in the ribbon, here's the button here, Show Formulas. When I click this button, it actually shows the formulas rather than the answers. And so, irrespective of where I'm sitting, it reveals all the formulas in this sheet. And I can just as easily turn it off and turn it on with the same button. If I was to go print, and let's just go print preview, which is one of our buttons on our quick access toolbar, you will see that it would actually print the formulas also. So not only can you view the formulas, but you can also print the formulas if necessary. And I'm just going to go back. All of these formulas look at B4, and all of these formulas look at B5. So that's a very helpful button. In fact, it's so helpful that I would actually recommend that you right-click this button and you left-click Add It to the Quick Access Toolbar. And so now it appears on my Quick Access Toolbar, which means that I can return to the Home tab in the ribbon, and should I ever need to see the formulas or hide the formulas, I now have a button. There is a shortcut key and it mentions it's here, Control apostrophe or Control tilde You'll find that key under the Escape key, and that's the shortcut key to show or hide formulas. Now, Excel also abides by a set of rules with, um, with relation to the order in which a formula is calculated. Let me demonstrate. For example, I'm going to ask you to highlight these cells and delete what's in them. And I'm going to ask you to put a formula in B9. <clears throat> now, the formula I'd like to put in B9 is really to add these four numbers up and then to divide them by four. So based on what we know so far, we would go equals the cell plus the cell plus the cell plus the cell, add them all up, and then divide them by 4. And that's what I want to do. I want to add them all up first and divide them by 4. And when I press enter, I get the answer 70. Now, that answer is not actually giving me what I want. What I wanted was to add them all up first. 10 plus 20 is 30, plus 30 is 60, plus 40 is 100. 100 divided by 4 should have given me 25. Now, the reason I've got you to put the formula in the way I have is to show you that Excel actually sorts, sorry, calculates a formula in a certain order. And it doesn't calculate the formula in the order of left to right. We tend to go left to right. We go 10 plus 20 is 30, plus 40 is, plus 30 is 60, plus 40 is 100, divided by 4 is 25. So we're reading it and we're calculating it in our heads from left to right. What Excel tends to do is it tends to go in this order, brackets, brackets over division, oops, excuse me, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. This is the order in which Excel will calculate your formula. And in fact, what we do is we refer to this as BODMAS, which is actually made up of the first letters of each word. And so the O is just to turn it into a word, over. So BODMAS is ultimately algebra. And when it comes to calculating a formula, the order in which the formula is calculated is based on the principles of algebra. And the principles of algebra are summarized with this word or acronym, which is made up of the first letters of other words. 
So the idea is that brackets are done first, then division, then multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. So what it's doing here is it's actually looking at your formula equals b4 plus b5 plus b6 plus b7 divided by 4. It's looking at this formula here and it's deciding, right, I'm going to look for the brackets first. There are no brackets, so the brackets are done. Then it's going to look for division. So it's going to skip right past all this addition and it's going to do the division first. Now, b7 divided by 4 is 40 divided by 4, which is 10. So now the formula becomes equals b4 plus b5 plus b6 plus 10, because that bit there has been done. So now the division's done. There is no multiplication, so it considers that done. Now it does the addition, second to last. So in terms of addition, then it's going to go, oh, well, OK, I'll give you 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus the earlier division result, which was 10. And so addition's done. There is no subtraction. So it comes to the answer, 70. And that's how it's derived it. Basically, algebra sits behind Excel, and when you give a formula to Excel, it will apply it in this order. It will do the brackets first, then the division, then the multiplication, then the addition, and then subtraction. So when it sees this division here, it does this first, and then it does the addition afterwards, and hence why you get 70. Coming back to our formula in B9, if you want it to do the adding up of these four cells first, you'll have to put them in brackets, because brackets are done first. So I'm going to click here on my formula bar, and I'm going to add an open bracket in front of B4, and a close bracket after B7, and press Enter. And there's my 25. So just be aware that sometimes Excel might throw a result that you weren't expecting. And the only way that you're going to resolve it if it's an algebra problem is by tackling it with brackets.